I'm going to start a new wood carving project today and I'm going to do it just a little bit different from the way I did my other videos. I'm going to slow down a little bit and uh, show you a little bit more uh, techniques on how I do it and uh, maybe talk through some of it. Uh, bear with me, I'm not used to talking on camera, I'm used to being on the other side. So uh, uh, anyway, I'm going to attempt a uh, smallmouth bass and uh, i got my block too below here. So uh, let's get started. All right, I'm going to start off using... Uh, uh, first, I got this big block of Tupelo here that I can use. Uh, I got some reference material that I always keep in front of me. Uh, I've got photos on my phone that I'll make reference to a lot. Um, I have these uh, patterns um, that I'm going to use. Uh, I'll cut these out here in just a second and show you how we lay them, how I lay them out on the wood here. So uh, let me get started. My scissors. On the pattern, uh, let me throw this in there. On the pattern, some of these I'll modify just a little bit. Um, uh, for instance, on this one, the uh, on this pattern, a smallmouth, um, the maxilla bone doesn't come back past the eye. I don't know if you can see that. Uh, on a large mouth, it comes quite a bit further back, but on the small mouth, it was up. And on on this particular pattern, it came back just a little too far. So. I, in Photoshop, redrew it and, and made it just a little bit closer to the corner of the eye the way it's supposed to be. Uh, there's a couple other things. I, I thought the tail was a little thick here, so I narrowed it down, which I'll, you can't see the lines probably on camera, but I'll, uh, I'll, I've got them drawn out here a little bit thinner. Um, so this will be a, roughly the same, the uh, life size for it, uh, the actual size of the carving. So um, I'm gonna just cut this out here. And uh, some of this I will do time lapse, which will probably start here. So uh, just so that it doesn't bore you for all the tedious stuff. Oh, and I, I print these out in duplicates so that I've got the original, so I don't, I don't I'm not cutting the original. Uh, so I, I print them out so I have multiple so I can cut them out. So here I don't cut the fins out because I add the fins later. The fins get cut out separate and put on a separate piece of wood that I trace out and cut the fins out. So they all get done separate. Uh, so I'll save those here. Uh, and I'll show you later how I do these because I do them in pairs so that they'll, um, they're will they easier to hang on to when you're carving them. So, um, and, and a good example of modifying the carve um, I like this shape. This will be the top view of it, and I like the, the curve of the fish, but it's just a little too much. So I'm going to I've redrawn it, and I'm going to change the curve just slightly, so it'll just be a little. I don't know if you can see that. Um, it'll be just a little bit slightly different curve than what's on here, because um, I don't want quite as strong a curve. Uh, so I'm going to cut this one out here. And I cut these just a little bit larger. And I learned the hard way to go just a little bit larger because you can take the wood off, but you can't put it back. So um, I go just a little bit bigger. All right, so this will be, this will be the top view or the shape of the fish that will be swimming. So. All right, so then we'll lay these out on this block. Um, just lay that here. I forgot to cut this one piece out here. The mouth. this out here um, 
try to maximize the use of the wood so that I don't waste a lot of it. This stuff's expensive. Um, this block of Tupelo here was um, um, close close to two hundred dollars, so it's it's not cheap. And I'm sure some of that has to do with the way wood prices are now too. Uh, it's it's kind of sad that you know I live in Arkansas and we have thousands of acres of Tupelo swamps, but I can't find Tupelo local, so I've had to order this from out of state. And of course, it was eighty-five dollars shipping charge. All right, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to out, just outline the, the template here. And it doesn't have to be exact. Uh, just get it close. And I don't have a bandsaw big enough, unfortunately, to cut this the right way. So I'm going to have to rough it out with a chainsaw to fit the bandsaw. So, uh, so let me measure this out. So I've got the I've got the drawing on here. I don't know if that's going to show on here. Kind of hard to see on camera, but anyway, I got the shape of the fish drawn on there. And I'm just going to mark out some cutting lines here for my chainsaw so I can block it out. Um, so let me come, come this down here. Now I'm going to lay the curvature part of the fish out. I need to make sure I get this to the side I want. Um, all right. So now I've got that the curvature part put on there. I'm going to on here what I need to cut off with the chainsaw. So now what I'll do is I'll cut it with a chainsaw, I'll cut down, I'll cut this, this piece will come off, so I'll have this piece here that my fish will be on. So uh, let's get the chainsaw going and we'll get that going here. piece with the fish on it. I need to cut this block piece off here real quick. All right, I got my little bandsaw set up here. It's not very big. Uh, I actually need a bigger one, so that'll be next on my list. But anyway, uh, so now I'm gonna cut the scrap off of this and then we'll start cutting the, uh, the shape of the fish out. Um, I, I failed to show cutting this piece off on the with a chainsaw, I forgot to hit the record, so I'm a professional. But don't ever forget that. <laughs> All right, let's see here. Bend this down just a little bit here. Right. Here's the fish. I cut it a little bit crooked. It just quite fit under that bandsaw. Right. 
So, I might have to file that down just a little bit. I oh, know that should fit. All right, so now I'm going to cut the shape of the fish out. Actually, I should cut the shape of the top first. Nope, that's not gonna work. I'll have to cut that with the chainsaw. All right, so I'm gonna cut the shape of the fish out here and then we'll shape the rest of it. And again, this just has to be a rough shape. It doesn't have to be precise. Because I'll refine that later on the saw. Here's the shape of the fish now. I got the shape down, rough, roughed out, and then I'll start, I'll draw the top, the curvature part. Um, this will get put on top so I can get my shape down that I want on the, um, the movement of the fish down on this one. So um, I'll do this mouth here. Side, I probably should have waited to do the mouth once I got the, the rough shape done. That would have been a lot easier. I hope that don't come back to bite me. Uh, but we'll see. We'll try it here. I think it'll be all right. These pieces, um, the scrap that I cut off, um, I save these for later on. I'll cut them out and carve rocks out of them for the habitat base. So I don't throw any of this scrap away. Uh, a good friend of mine, David Wakonski up in New York, uh, Master Carver taught me that. So uh, it's worked out well for me. So all the rocks that you see in my, uh, on the bases on some of the other carvings are all hand carved. So I don't have any videos on those yet. Maybe I'll do that on this one. Okay, so what I'll do right now is I'm going to take a uh, my little curve piece here that uh, shows the top shape of the fish and I'll lay it out on the pattern the blank here and then I will trace that out see if I can do that without getting in the way of the camera so I'm going to trace that out and again this just has to, it doesn't have to be exact just rough shape Really wish I had a bigger band saw, so I'm gonna have to do this the hard way. Okay, so I got the rough shape laid out here. I don't know if you can see that again. Uh, and then I need to draw the center line. You always want to keep up with the center line on it. And this just rough, I'm just gonna kinda of eyeball it. The pattern has the center line on it but I'm going to eyeball it. And again, it just has to be close for right now. So normally what you would do is go back and you can either put the pieces back on here and draw it flat on the top uh, but since I don't have a bandsaw big enough to handle that, I'm having to cut it down smaller. So what I'll do is I'll cut these pieces off um, with the, uh, actually I'll grind them off with a uh, belt sander. 
I'll cut some bigger pieces off here, the bigger chunks, and then the rest of it gets done with a uh, angle grinder until I get it down to the rough shape I need on, on this shape. So let me get started on that. Okay, since some of this I can't get on my bandsaw to cut out because it's not big enough, I'm gonna cut some of the rough pieces off with a uh, just a regular hand saw here. And uh, and then I can do the rest with an angle grinder. So let's cut these off here. So I'll cut the rest of these pieces off and then I will uh, start the main refining shape of the belt sander and uh, get it kind of smoothed out and we'll finish the uh, refining from there. The rest of this will have to do with my angle grinder um, just simply because my bandsaw won't fit it. Uh, but I've, I've got this uh, DeWalt uh, with the 36 grit grinding wheel it, it'll go pretty quick uh just it just wastes a lot of wood and it's pretty messy pretty dusty so uh i'm gonna get this set up and we'll get started on that i'm gonna turn a fan on because it's so blasted hot out here so uh i'm gonna decide where i want to start here i'm gonna start on this uh let's start on this side here there Almost got it set to the shape I want. Uh, needs a, just a little bit more refining, then I'll take it out and put it on a belt sander and uh, refine it even more. So I need to uh, need to take a little bit more off the side here. Take the grinder. So I've got the shape I want, uh, rough, rough shape that I want, uh, the motion of it here you can see. Um, this will be the show side, the tail will kind of flare out. Uh, so I'll take it on the belt sander now and I'll refine it down even more and start chamfering off the sides here to get more of a, the rounded fish shape and, uh, and work on the mouth. I mean, this will all be rounded off and start refining that shape as well. So I'm going to get the belt sander set up and we'll move out there and uh, start from there. All right, so I don't have the luxury of a big air conditioned shop, so I'm having to do this outside. And I've just got the bare minimum tools. Um, so I'm going to use this belt sander here uh, with some 36 grits uh, sandpaper on it to. Uh, refine the edge down just a little bit more and uh and sorry about the fan noise but it's 110 degrees out here today so 
I have to deal with the noise. Anyway, uh, I'm going to start this out um, by locking this on in the on position. <laughs> All right, so I've got this uh, pretty rough to where I shape. It's probably a little thick in here, but again, uh, I, I want to leave it that way until I start refining it down. Uh, I don't want to take too much off right at the front uh, because there's still a lot of refining to go yet, but I do need to find my center line here now. Where's my pencil? Um, I'm just going to kind of eyeball this um, again. Um, I'm pretty good at straight lines, so anyway, we'll see here. So we'll just, uh, so there's my straight line. This is my center line. Top of the fish. I'm going to do the same on the bottom here. So uh, that's my straight line, my center line. And what I'll do is I'll start taking off, um, I'll start chamfering down these edges to something like this. Um, so I'll, I won't go past that line when I'm sanding it down. And the same on the side here. Um, I'm just gonna go down, just starting off easy. Same on the bottom. Now I'm not grinding down to this side. I'm just, I'm just taking that edge off this corner. I'll just be taking that corner off to give it more of a little bit more of a rounded shape. Over here. Now on the sides, this this line here, the sanding line will probably cut more up to here. Um, and a little bit narrower up here so it'd be probably more like that so i'll go ahead and put that on there same over here and then you, I mean, you'll see as i as i start sanding it off what i'm talking about all right i'm afraid that's gonna have to be done with an angle grinder Okay, uh, I found it's easier if I put the grinder in the vise lightly. And then I'll, I know this is dangerous as I'll get out, but like I say, without a uh, proper tools, a proper shop, this, you do what you can. So uh, what I'll do is I'll plug it in now and it'll start. And I'll be able to use, it's easier to control these edges from here like this. So my glass is on here, start it up.
All right, so I got it just a little bit more rounded off, as you can see here. And uh, probably going to take it with a Dremel tool and start rounding that off even more. Uh, I got the bulk of it off, so the Dremel tool will allow me to uh, get it down to the final shape. We'll start on that here. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and bring, come back to the belt sander for a minute. And uh, I think I could take just a little bit more off, round it off a little bit more. Uh, just to save myself some wear and tear on my little Dremel tool. Uh, just take a little more stock off and uh, refine the shape down a little bit more. So let me start this up. Okay, I think I'm done for the day with this one. I think I got the shape down to where I want it to be. Uh, there's, there's still some detail refining that needs to be done. And I'll start that in part two of this video series, uh, probably starting with a Dremel, hogging off a little bit more material and refining that shape down a little bit further. Possibly even uh, drawing in some mouth and gill cover details uh, that'll just kind of help me keep my proportions on uh, that'll get sanded off several times and redone i'm sure so but anyway i appreciate y'all watching and uh stay tuned for part two thanks